ever there was a brand that perfectly blended the boundaries of more traditional vintage style instruments like Fenders and more modern up-to-date high-performance guitars like Jackson's and Ibanez's, then that brand would undoubtedly be Charvel Guitars. Charvel Guitars are known for taking classic Fender guitars such as Strats and Tellies and modding them or hot rodding them as it's sometimes known to make them more higher output and a bit more high performance for the rock and the metal of the late 70s and early 80s that demanded a bit more from the guitars than traditional Strats and Tellies gave them. Guitarists were playing with more and more gain and they were playing faster and faster and they needed guitars that could match their speed and withstand the high higher gain of their sound. Even through to today, their legacy still carries on and they have a huge range of different guitars that all pay homage to these hot rodded modded guitars of the late 70s and early 80s. But just like any brands that we've discussed throughout this series, approaching Charvel from the outside and trying to find a guitar that's right for you can be a little bit of a daunting process with lots of words and phrases popping up that you might not necessarily understand, things like ProMod and SoCal and Style One and FR, etc, etc. So today, let's go through a bit of the history of Charvel, where they came from, and then look at them in today's market and help break down the different ranges and untangle some of the jargon and help you when it comes to understanding Charvel guitars. Now, before we get into it, it's probably worth noting that whilst I tend to do these videos on brands that I like or that I find interesting or that I think could do with some unpacking, with this video, I actually have a little bit of an ulterior motive, mainly because I myself have recently become the owner of my own Charvel guitar. And this one is mine. It's a DK24 HSS 2PT, and what that means we'll get into later in the video. Okay, with that being said, let's jump into it. Now, if you've already watched our Understanding Jackson video, the link for which I'll put in the description, a lot of what I'm about to say to you might be quite familiar, and that's because Jackson plays quite a large role in Charvel's history and vice versa. Charvel as a company was originally started in 1974 by a man by the name of Wayne Charvel, who had just left Fender to open his own guitar repair shop. His main focus was repairing out of warranty Fender instruments, which have eventually evolved into modding and hot rodding these guitars as we've mentioned already. These modded guitars were dubbed super strats because of their higher output pickups that could handle a lot more gain, as well as features and appointments that really aided shreddability, things like Floyd Rose double locking trems and slimmer neck profiles and the like. Sadly, times were tough for Wayne Charvel, and in 1978 he ended up selling the business to a man by the name of Grover Jackson, and yes, that at Jackson, who funnily enough was an employee at Charvel Guitars at the time. Grover Jackson took the company into a brand new dimension, going from simply hot rodding and souping up strats and tellies to building their own entire brand new guitars. I mean, the shapes were still largely influenced by the strats and tellies that Fender were making, but they had little tweaks here and there. The popularity soared into the 1980s, combined with Jackson Guitars, the newly formed company that Grover Jackson made to start creating some even crazier shapes than Charvel were known for, and the Charvel and Jackson brands became the ultimate hair metal and heavy rock guitars, and they were used by some of the most prominent artists of that era. <laughs>
Jackson stayed with the company until 1989, when he eventually sold it to a company called IMC, which stands for International Music Corporation, and is probably the vaguest company name I've heard in the music industry so far. From this point until the early 90s, Charvel guitars were exclusively produced in Japan, until eventually production started to slow and Charvel became very sporadic throughout the rest of this decade. That is until 2002, when the Jackson Charvel company was eventually purchased by the Fender Music Instrument Corporation, who have continued to produce and distribute both brands all the way through to today. So that's a brief history of Charvel Guitars, a repair shop that turned into one of the most iconic guitar brands of the 1980s. So let's have a look at Charvel as they are today then, with what they have to offer that hopefully won't change too much in the coming weeks and months after I film this. So the first thing to note about Charvel Guitars, which is probably the first time we've come across this in our Understanding Brand series, is that there isn't really any sort of entry level with them to speak of. Obviously Jackson have the JS series and Ibanez have got the Geos, but Jackson don't really have a series that comes in at that beginner entry level price. You can actually get a Charvel guitar for under 500 pounds, mainly thanks to Joe Duplantia of Gojira fame with his signature model that comes in at just under 500 pounds. <laughs> Charvel guitars tend to start around 600, 700 pounds and go up from there. Primarily, there's three different ranges of guitars. You have the Pro Mod series, which is pretty much Charvel's standard and most common guitars. You've got the Made in Japan guitars, which are made in Japan, and you have the USA Select guitars, which are made in the USA. You also have a custom shop where they will custom make whatever guitar you want within a certain formula. However, that's also done by the same people who make all the USA Selects. They do have artist signature guitars as well, but these fall across pretty much every price point. So primarily, we're gonna look at those three different ranges of Pro Mod, made in Japan, and USA Select. The Pro Mods are the most common Charvel guitars that you're likely to find on the market, and they tend to go from around 600, 700 pounds up to about 1200, depending on the bells and whistles that you get on them. They're known for being great mid-range, high-performance workhorses for all sorts of professional guitarists and, well, me. I mean, I just normally play it in my bedroom, but other people use it in recording and on stage and on tour all over the world. The next tier up is the MJ series, which as you can probably guess means made in Japan. Japan is a country that is obsessed with perfection. They take incredible pride in their work and their craftsmanship is second to none. However, with all of that being said, made in Japan Charvels are a lot rarer than their standard line. Normally, there only tends to be about two or three models that are being made at any one time. In fact, they're so rare that annoyingly, we don't have any that we can play in this video. We did have one that I was gonna use in this video, but we are a guitar shop and we sold it. Finally, you have the USA Select range. Now these guitars are also very rare, however there are a few more standard models that are being produced at any one time compared to the Made in Japan series. The difference between that and Japan though is that USA Selects are all exclusively made to order. So if you want one and your favourite guitar shop hasn't already ordered one, then you're gonna have to be really patient. In all honesty though, the fundamental guitars within each of these price brackets are very much the same no matter which level you go for. A lot of the time, they'll have the same appointments, but just with more affordable parts. For example, the Floyd Roses that they use on the Pro Mod series are Floyd Rose 1000s, whereas in the USA Selects, they tend to use FR Originals, which are produced back in Germany, where they originally came from.
So now we've had a little chat about the different price ranges, let's talk about the actual guitars that you're going to find within them. So hopefully this is the point where I start to untangle some of the jargon that you might see when it comes to looking at the names of Charvel guitars. We've obviously talked about things like ProMod already, but what does SoCal, Sandimas and DK, 2PT and FR etc mean? Well let's talk about it now. Firstly we'll talk about the fundamental guitars, starting with DK. If you weren't aware, this is a DK and that is short for Dinky. It's called that because the guitar body is about 7 eighths of the size of a regular Fender Stratocaster. It was originally a Jackson model and it still is, but they brought it over and started producing it with Charvel with the same bolt on neck construction for a snappier tone. The most common DK is the DK24, which this one is, but you can also get DK22s, the number there referring simply to the number of frets. Next up, we'll talk about SoCal guitars. Charvel SoCal guitars pay homage to the original modded and hot rodded guitars of the late 70s, the original modded guitars on which the company was built. Essentially, they're designed to be very similar to their Fender equivalents, but with upgraded appointments such as double locking trems and higher output pickups like the original guitars of the late 70s had. Underneath the SoCal umbrella, you have two different styles, Style 1 and Style 2. Style 1 essentially is a Strat and Style 2 is a Tele. I mean, given that they're now owned by Fender, I feel like they could probably get away with calling them Strat and Tele, but they call it Style 1, Style 2. <laughs> With the SoCal guitars, you're likely to find things like Floyd Rose double locking tremolos, as well as high output Seymour Duncan pickups. Essentially, the two SoCal styles are designed to be souped up strats and tellies. However, compared to some of the other Charvels we're going to talk about, they do retain a lot of similar elements to those strats and tellies. Things like the pick guards, which means that the electronics are front loaded, which gives you a bit of a punchier tone. The Sandimas guitars are based on the Charvels that were being produced into the early early 80s when the company moved to San Dimas. These guitars move a bit further away from the original Fender conventions that the SoCal guitars retain. They have their own original body shapes, but of course they are inspired by Strats and Tellys. The main difference between the two ranges of SoCal and San Dimas is that with the San Dimas guitars, all of the electronics and pickups are loaded from the back, meaning there's no pick guard, and some argue that increases the guitar's sustain and resonance, which of course makes a lot of sense for people who want to play screaming leads on them. Again, like the SoCal guitars, the Sandimas have Style 1 and Style 2, which represent Strat and Tele shapes respectively. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so essentially, if there is a pit guard on the Charvel, it's a Socal. If there isn't one, it's a San Dimas. Unless it's shaped like a Dinky, then it's a DK. Style one is a Strat, style two is a Tele. And if it's produced anywhere other than the USA or Japan, then it's most likely from the Pro Mod range. Easy. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for the guitars. However, what Charvel do is they have a lot of variance in terms of the features and appointments within each guitar that they tend to note within the name of the guitar by letters and numbers. So on top of what we've already discussed, right at the end, let's quickly clear up just a little bit more of the jargon that you're likely to find. So across all the ranges of Charvel, they tend to have quite a few options for different pickup configurations that are depicted either by a humbucker or H or a single coil which is an S. For example my guitar is an HSS which means it has a humbucker in the bridge and it has two single coils in the middle and the neck positions. You can have other options like HSH which is humbucker single coil humbucker or you can have HH which is two humbuckers. I think you get the idea. The other thing you'll most likely see noted by letters in the name is what type of bridge it has. There tends to be three standard options with Charvel. You either have a hard tail or no tremolo system which which is depicted by HT. You can have a two-point tremolo, which is a bit more of a modern version of the kind of tremolo system that you'll get on a Strat, which is depicted by 2PT. Or you can have a Floyd Rose locking tremolo system, which is depicted by FR. Other than that and the finish, the other thing that you're most likely to see within the name is the type of wood that the neck is made from. You have options like maple, depicted by an M, or caramelized maple, which is depicted by CM, which is what my guitar has on this one. pretty much all you need to know. I think and I hope that gives you enough information to help you make an informed decision when it comes to buying a Charvel guitar. Like I said at the beginning, most of what you're likely to find with Charvel is going to be in the Pro Mod series, but if you're lucky to come across an MJ or a USA guitar, then it's definitely worth trying out to see if you want to justify the jump up in price point. But no matter which guitar it is, Charvel guitars perfectly blend the old school and new school thoughts of guitars into one instrument, providing you with the ultimate guitar workhorse that's a bit more high performance than your old standards. The company is rooted in a history that demands more from the instruments that are being made. So whichever you choose and whichever you play, you know you're getting a guitar that is up to the task. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little rundown of Charvel. Thanks so much for Tom for coming in and playing in the way I hope I can play with my Charvel in a few years time. What are your thoughts on Charvel though? Have you got one? Do you want to own one? Do you have any questions about them that some of us who have bought one can answer? Let us know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to see more things like this, and we will see you very soon.